Hey, Justin, thanks for joining us today. As a way of getting started, give us a little background on yourself. Hey, Brian, well, thank you for having me today. I'm excited to join you. I'm Justin Senna. I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, I'm engaged. I have a 11 year old daughter uh, by way of uh, the lovely woman who's decided to uh, share her with me. So I'm uh, living a pretty good life. I've been in sales for a long time. Uh, love music as a major hobby. And I have a big, big, chunky white pit bull named Daniel. He's my best friend, you know, outside yeah. of uh, outside of all my human friends. So not a whole lot to share about me outside of that. I'm, I'm a family man and I work more than full time. So yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, why'd you get into sales? You know, I, I, from a really young age, I, I just, I was never a shy kid and always had a way of just talking with people and always very social guy. And I was just told all throughout my life that I needed to get in sales. And of course, as a young man, I'm like, what does that even mean? <laughs> you know, right. and, and and I had no idea, you know, it's, it's your parents, it's your aunt, it's your uncles, you know, sharing that with you. And as I got a little bit older and got into the working world, I realized, okay, this is what they're talking about here. I'm a bit... I'm a bit uh, more naturally connected with people than than other personalities are. And so, you know, for me, it was always just about chasing uh, the money for a little while, you know, as a, as a young man trying to make a decent living and, and sure. sales was really the way to go. But, you know, I think if we're, if we talk about why I love sales, it's really just, it's the first and foremost, it's the human connection. Yeah. I love the idea that I, I get to work with people and talk with people every single day. And it's a gift uh, in my own right that that I can even talk to people the way that I do. And so if I can do something with a natural ability and make a living out of it, I mean, why not? Yeah. You know? And was it easy at first or was it oh, no. hard? Because it's a lot more than just being liking people and wanting to yeah. talk with them. That's part of it. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, and you're right. No, so, you know, when when I look back to it, I mean, I was the worst at sales. It was the, the talking to people was the easiest part. Yeah. It was everything else that was horrible. And I, and there was no discipline, right? As any young junior sales uh, representative, right? Whether you're an AE or an AM, SDR, it doesn't matter. You have to learn how to uh, find, find your sales process within your role, right? And until you figure out what even is a sales process, your job is going to be terrifyingly difficult. And so it was it was horribly hard at first. But when I started to figure out the basic science of sales and I started to become obsessed with it, it became so much easier. And it always began with the discipline. And that's it, because a lot of reps, their process is reacting to what the prospect wants. That's yeah. not a process, that's kind no. of just reaction. Right. How, how did you develop your process? You know, it was, it, there's a different process for each, each company, each product uh, that, that I've ever sold, right? Because that process has to, has to change, you know, the, the shape and the form of your, of your conversations, meaning discovery and qualifying and next steps, that's going to be different from everywhere you go. So the first time that I created a sales process for myself, meaning I have learned sales processes and then conformed pieces of those into my own process, um, what it did for me is it opened up my eyes to potential, really my own potential and in, in being great and and having success. Um, and I'll give you a little bit more long wind to that if you don't mind. Go ahead. But I rem I remember that pre-sales process in one of my early roles, I was I was having great talk time and but I wasn't setting next steps. And so my sales leader at the time was, you know, coming to me and saying, you know, hey, let's listen back to a couple of these calls you've done and you're showing me, you know, this is what you're doing well. It's like, you're, you're great at, at getting them on the phone. You're tenacious about your dials. You're a, a incredibly likable and everything that you're seeing, it sounds great. Okay. But it's like, there's many things that you're not doing within all of that, which is our, the reason that you are not getting additional phone calls. So next steps and creating more opportunities because I was this young man where great talk time, tons of dials, the effort was there, but the results weren't. Yeah. And, and so he had just, he shared with me, he said, this is what we have to do. It's like, I need you to talk less, listen more. Okay. And it's like, and we're going to implement a few steps into your sales process that are going to really change it all for you. And so while I was trending about 85% of my goal before I had really taken on professional coaching for the first time in my first real sales role. 
it turned around and I was averaging 100 to 120 percent all of a sudden. Pipelines filling up, and I go, my gosh, what a, a few simple tweaks yeah. and being coachable, it changed it all for me. And um, still take those to heart. And that's it. And it was probably pretty easy for him to see those things, but it was kind of, it's hard for the person, you, to see them, right? Because it felt yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And as soon as somebody can come into your life and then go, hey, look behind this curtain, see what your life <laughs> can look like. If you do yeah. this and you go, oh, and it just opens up your eyes. And it's, that's a gift. Now, a lot of people are sensitive to that. They would be like, no, no, I'm doing good. Yeah, I, I asked, you know, what would you like to do next? And they said, think about it. That's not yeah. the next step. No, yeah. no, no, it's not. And, you know, and it is certainly in the role that I'm in now. Um, I drill in the next steps with with my sales team. Be, you know, they're they're so critically important. Learning everything that I've learned in my life and doing proper discovery and proper qualifying and setting next steps all the way through. You know, when do we discount and what are best negotiation practices, closing practice? I feel like I have an entire arsenal underneath me of about 15 real solid years of failing and learning. And um setting next steps is a truly it's a science. It doesn't have to be hard, but there is a science to it, like there is with I think any other aspect of a sales process. So now you're using the word science. What does that mean to you? You know, to me, it's I, I look at it just it's a formula. Right. I think of you. Now we all have different imaginations. So we're all going to look at, at the same things in the world a little bit differently from one another. Right. So different perspectives. But a science for me, I say, OK, here's your formula. Take just band, for example. Right. That's a real easy one that probably anybody listening to this podcast is going to understand about you take band. Well, there's a formula to that. Right. Now it's, you know, the budget authority needs timeline or timing or whatever you like to fill that in with. But the science to it is. You're going to flip flop those around. I think very rarely are we actually doing BANT. We might be doing NTAB or NATB in there. So that's to me, that's a one of the sciences I can explain. I'll, I'll pause there though. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people argue with it, but I think having acronyms or some type of structure to your mm -hmm. call to kind of know what to ask about without sounding like a rap. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, you know, here's the thing, and and this is, and I've learned this in every every leadership role I've been in too, right? You're you're not going to be your best right out of the gates in any new role that you're in, right? So you're never going to sound the best. You're never going to ask the the best questions right away, and yeah, you're going to fail a whole lot. But I say, look, let's rush into that, and let's let's learn, let's fail as much as we can, as fast as we can, so that we can what. We can learn as fast as we can and we can grow and get better as quickly as we can. I lean into failure. Uh, I don't know about anybody else listening to this, but I lean into it with my arms as wide open as they possibly can be. You, you know, it just goes back to the old saying, right? You learn more from your failures than you do from your successes. And in a sales role, and I have a big sales target in front of me and my team members do, I'm ready to fail as quick as I can so I can start chipping away at those targets. It's just the way that I look at it. And other than next steps, what were some of the other things that really took your game to the next level? Oh, I mean, high quality discovery, right? So we're asking the right questions. It's easy to ask questions, right? It's harder to ask the right questions. The right questions. So just, yeah. just because you're asking questions doesn't mean you did discovery. I mean, you're probably discovering something. You're probably learning what about their dog and their family life and, and how how's the weather today, all right? That's not discovery. There's rapport building there. So you have to help people understand what are we actually talking about here when, when we're talking about what is discovery and what are qualifying questions and whatnot. But high quality discovery questions are going to open up that conversation and carry that conversation and allow, you know, you as the sales professional to ask your question, sit back, do 70% of the listening while they do 70% of the talking. Now, we can flip those numbers around. It's going to be different in every role, but you get what I'm talking about. Yeah. And what, what are some of your go-to questions on discovery? Gosh, if, if we're going to get hyper-specific, I'm going to, I'll tell you what, so I don't want to get too specific in the role that I'm in. It right? doesn't have to be, you know, it could take out the problem domain and, you know, because yeah. it's like, you know, what was your point of your call today? What prompted the call today? Or, yep. And then- yeah drill into their situation or do you do like a spin type thing or do you uh, I start 
I always start broad. Yeah. You know, and I was, I, I always talk, you know, I've mentioned this to every sales professional that I've ever worked with and ever been on the team with me is to just take, you know, to take a pyramid and flip it upside down and we start broad. And then we get very specific in that pointed question at the very end where we're going to drill into a bit more on where we find that pain point. But a broad question is what I'm going to stick with, right? So potentially, hey, so why'd you take this call with me today, right? Why did you give me your time, right? That's what I want to understand about first. Based on where we go with that, well, I know where, where I want to eventually go, but I'm going to get one of a few answers, right? Oh, yeah. you know, you know, you you know, love your company. We have a great relationship with your company or, you know, I just enjoyed your email, whatever it may be. And I say, okay, great. So now let's talk a little bit about how your operations are going these days, right? How do you do X? Pause. And let's talk about how do you do Y? All right, great. And I might go into the direction of, you know, and this is the most generic direction we can go in oftentimes. So what would you change about X right now if you could? Right. What are what are one or two things you could change about X? If you, if you had that magic wand and you can just change it, no money, no nothing, just no arguments. What would you change? All right. Why would you change that? All right. And then what would that ultimately do for you right now? Yeah. <clears throat> That's going to put me on that road ultimately, hopefully. That yeah. I'm going to go on. Yeah. Cool. And what do you think is your strongest suit as either a salesperson or a sales leader? my patience. Yeah. You know, yeah, I would say my patience. Um, I, my patience and I have a, just an undying positivity, you know, I've, I've always been that way, always been very hopeful, but you know, hope I don't necessarily lean on hope so much in my adult years. I think it's okay <laughs> to have a little hope in your life, but you need to do something about it. You can't just sit back and, and wait and wish for things. You got to do something about it. But my patience with people and my patience with the things that we are forced to wait on you know what I mean? That we're well, that's it, because sales really isn't a patience profession, meaning that it's really hard to be patient. Not that a yeah. patience isn't good for the sales profession, but you Absolutely. got quarterly, monthly numbers, and customers never move as fast as we do, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when they say yeah. now, they may mean 90 <laughs> days from now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Or even longer than that. So yeah, it's tough. You know, I think patience is a virtue you have to have in in a leadership role. Yes. Now, if from from the sales side of it, for sure. But when it comes to to the people that you're with, right? You know, in a in a leadership role, you work so hard to to onboard uh, a new professional on your team, and that is one of the most challenging things you can do in in a role. Is is certainly if you have limited resources to use some companies, you have less resources than others. And so in some roles, you might be doing training yourself and, it, you know, you have to have an unlimited amount of patience when it comes <laughs> to someone's, to someone's learning. And I think that that patience can, uh, it can falter a little bit if we're, you know, six, 12, 18 months, say into a role. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I think that patience is probably my number one virtue that's helped me get to where I am in my life. I had a stint in the music industry before I was in sales and, to break into that and get a major label record deal. And, and I'm working with really? four other guys. Yeah. You know, nice. to work with four other guys and make this happen. Not far out of high school. Uh, it was nothing less than a miracle, but there was a lot of hard work and patience that went into that too. So I, I attribute a lot of what I went through there with my success in the corporate world, because I lived two very different lives, but I've always been the same man through both well, of those. You can't really be consistent unless you're patient. True. Right. Because if you're yeah. impatient, you're constantly looking for that next dopamine hit, the next exciting thing in a jo job yeah. hop or deal hop or approach hop. You yeah. change your yeah. process every week. Yeah. And you never really get it to be part of you. Now, tell me about the musician thing, because the correlation between good salespeople and musicians are pretty high. Yeah, you know, I, I could speak to one thing in, in particular here because and I and I mentioned this in, in interviews that I have with organizations, because they'll always look at my resume and they'll go, hmm, musician. Like, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, tell me about that. And I go, well, how how can I turn this into a, you know, how can I turn this into a work experience here? And 
you know, one of the areas of, you know, earlier in, in our interview here, you know, we were talking about my, my love for people and the human connection, right? Well, relationships is, is a big aspect to the human connection and relationship building is a huge connection in the sales process. And what I learned early on about myself is that I just had a knack for relationship building as well. That my other bandmates, and again, this was just next to my other bandmates, four of my best friends since high school, we're still close friends till this day. They didn't have the same skills to talk with people the, the way that I did. It was really interesting stuff. And it didn't make sense to me. I just thought this should, we're not shy, so shouldn't we all be like this, right? And that wasn't the case. But the relationship building, I was able to form critical relationships with the people that wound up getting me my record deals. I can't mention his name, but the gentleman um, who I met, he managed uh, Rage Against the Machine and ultimately uh, Drake, and he had given me a chance. And him and his wife both did. I met him on a whim, just in public. And well, I mean, the, the, the analogies between playing an instrument or any performance thing mm -hmm. fit really well to sales. And yeah. here's how you use it in an interview. Yeah. Because sales is subjective. So is music, yeah. right? Yep. And you probably had a uh, instructor, no. right? Somebody yeah. who, I don't know, what instrument did you play? I, I played several. I played uh, bass, guitar, and drums. That Those are the instruments I knew yeah. I'd play early on. I played bass for the band, but I, uh, I write and compose a lot of my own music now. So, Right. But, As a musician, you can't have the attitude. No, no, no. That was excellent. If the mm -hmm. person in the audience didn't like it or the right. instructor didn't like it. Yeah. So that you get that rehearsal, practice, practice, practice every day. You know, if yeah. you take a month off, that first time isn't going to be good. No. Nope. Yeah. Same in sales, right? <laughs> yep, absolutely, man. Yeah, it's it's practice, 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 execution. Right? Now, a lot of people come from like the academic world where it's knowledge, it's a test. Yeah. If you ace the test, who cares if you know it, how well you know it, if you ever use it again? Right. No, you don't test anybody on psychology from, unless you're, you're hiring for psychology, right? From college yeah. psychology. But Precisely. yeah, from a music standpoint, you, you know, you've had to take feedback, you've had to practice endless amounts of hours, and you had to take feedback. Yeah. And sometimes the performance was good, but some people don't like it. It's not their thing. Exactly. Yeah. And again, it's just subjective too, right? So now, now we're wondering, is it you put that you translate that into a sales call, right? Yeah. And you look and you look at disc personalities, right? So maybe somebody didn't like my performance on that call because it was only a, it wasn't a mesh of personalities. Right. Right. It's, it happens all the time. I see that all the time, which is something I, I train my teams on. It's just understanding how you can align with the personality that you're, that you're talking with so that it doesn't become some weird reflection of you in your own mind and an insecurity. If you can understand who somebody is and how they are just subjectively and very surface level, you can come into that level and just again go at their pace, go at their speed, go at their tone. Well, that's it. Because if you are like my style was questions, but once in a while, like one out of 10, the person would not be a talker. Yeah. Where they wanted to just sit back, not ask a single question and watch a presentation. Yeah. And I had to <laughs> entertain for a half hour. And that wasn't my skill. That wasn't my bag. I was the question guy. I got them talking. And it right. worked nine out of 10 times. But that one time, it's like, okay, 15 minutes into it, I'm on the last slide, right? <laughs> You're like, yeah. you know, nothing back and you don't know. Right. It. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there before too, plenty of times. And, it, and it's, and it's so interesting too, because you're looking at the fact that you just gave me your time. Why are you not participating in this? This is your time. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's so interesting. Now there's, there's several reasons for that. Right. And I think you and I both understand a lot of those now. Yeah. It, it, it's, I still have conversations with friends of mine in sales about that too. Yeah. I drove two hours to, to go this, do this one hour demo in front of 30 people. And they didn't say a single word until the entire end of the demo. And I got four questions, but here's the weird thing. They set a next meeting with me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Well, good job. <laughs> you did something right. So it's hey, awesome. And what characteristic 
if you developed would better would take your sales game or leadership game to the next level? Gosh, that's a tough one, man. You know, I think earlier on for me, one, one of the things I developed earlier in my life was I had to develop more patience with myself and I had to develop more consistency with myself. Yeah. I've seen, I'd say nowadays, <laughs> I can't <laughs> say what I really want to say. I'll Come just say on. this. <laughs> yeah. I would say uh, more, more patience with the, uh, the certain lack of resources at times, yeah. right? I, I need, I need a little more there. Uh, but here's my thing. I am, a, I am very tenacious and it's one of, it's one of my best qualities and it's one of my faults too, is that if I don't have a certain tool or resource in, at my disposal, I go and do it myself. I figure it out myself. Yeah. And I, I was raised by a single mother who, who taught me the virtue of that. And so along those lines, I think one of the things I, I've needed to fix more in my professional life here is just to probably, I need to bring more balance into my life because yeah. I'm very win, win, win focused. And it, that doesn't take away from the, my be a human element with, with me and my teams ever, but being so win, win, win focused, they go, all right, well, I can't get that from here, here, here. I'm going to go figure it out myself. And then I do, but that might turn into a 60 hour week every other week or whatever. It does. It be. Yeah. Right. Because you, so, let's face it, we probably underestimate how hard it is yeah. to, to take on that additional responsibility. Yeah. And we think it's a, an hour a day and it turns into two or three. Yeah. Where's that come from? Yeah. Time is a zero sum game, right? Exactly. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many nights it's been one of those do or die nights. You got to figure, you know, A, B and C out and you work a 12 to 16 hour day, but you get it done. Now, do you lose sleep over it and not feel amazing the next day? Yeah, you do. But I, I always look at every sacrifice that I make, whether it's whether it's my sleep, sometimes it's my family. Sometimes it's my health. I look at it for the the big win in the end. I always have the big picture in mind, you know, always every decision, every conversation, every sacrifice, it was always with the big picture in mind. That's the difference between champions and players. Yeah. And you know? let's talk about consistency. How do you keep that consistency? Because I think in sales, Everyone says they're consistent until you look at their calendar and they're yeah. like, it's a roller coaster. Yeah. It, it, it's just through discipline is what I've, yeah. what I've learned over time. It's just the discipline, you know, it, and you look at this in your personal life too, right? So, okay, you know, I have to discipline myself. So I get eight hours of sleep every night, I have to discipline myself. So I at least get three workouts this week and, and right. And I at least have two hours a night with my family, whatever it may be, it's going to be different for everybody. Well, it's the same thing with work must yeah. discipline myself. I'm going to start my day at 7.30 a.m. in the first half an hour a day. I'm going to review my email, all right? The next hour of my day, I'm reviewing you know, I'm reviewing my tasks for the day. The next hour of my day, I'm reviewing my pipeline, right? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discipline myself to focus on the core functions that are revenue-driving activities for my role. And anything that's after that, I'm wide open. I'm flexible, but I will be disciplined with these three most core components of my role every yeah. day at the beginning of my day. Discipline is what changed all for me. And I've seen it change for everybody. Now, when people can't discipline themselves is when I see them not grow. They maybe get better in a couple areas, but discipline can do so much for people who otherwise, maybe you're lacking in high quality discovery, right? But you're getting a lot of calls and you're getting yourself with those at-bats. And so at least we can, we can make corrections there because you're getting those at-bats. But if you're not disciplining yourself from core areas, that's going to, you're going to have fallout in, in every other core area of your role. Well, you know? especially today where there's interrupts everywhere, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, we carry one around with us. It's a, just an interrupt machine in our pocket all the time. Right. Yep. Yeah. Every time you get a little chirp or a buzz, it's really hard not to look. Certainly. Yeah. Do, do you turn yeah. it off? Do you put it in another room? Do you I am the most connected person I probably know. So where, where I turn it off is at the end of my, my work shift, but past a certain point, I, I run a, a global team from like all of North America and South America. We're in about three, four different time zones. So I make myself available quite often, but at a certain point, 
the eye everything they have apple has that new feature now where you can turn on that do right. not disturb yeah and so that'll stop me from getting the pings on the watch and everywhere else but i've learned i've needed to do that for myself because it it can create a lot of anxiety that you don't realize is anxiety and so yeah that's that's the biggest piece for me in the last year that's helped me a lot well and what i've noticed if, if you ignore it for a few hours sometimes it solves itself yeah right because yeah, it can yeah everyone's kind of like oh i wonder what justin thinks i should do and yeah. you're like justin doesn't thinking about it <laughs> you know, justin's yeah. got his own job to do yeah, exactly yeah and I love it. what do you see as the key differentiator between the very best salespeople you've worked with either presently or in the past or competitors anyone doesn't have to be the current company and just the the b players what, what's the real delta I'll just sum it up. If it, we're looking for just one key differentiator, I would just say just coachability. Yeah. Um, if if they're coachable, then I'm able to train them on consistency and reliability. All those all those those just key factors that make you great in any, anything that you're doing, right? So coachability is uh, is it for me? Yeah. So, and yeah, that's hard to find, isn't it? It can be. Yeah. I, but I. I've, I've found, I don't know, man, it's certain things are hard to put into words, right? Certain things are just feelings and their intuition, right? And uh, I have, I've done so much sourcing, recruiting, interviewing, hiring over, over so many years that, you know, yeah, there's certain questions I can ask somebody to figure out if they're coachable, right? There's a science and a psychology there, but there's also an intuition to it. My intuition's never steered me wrong. So have I made a few bad choices in the past? Yeah, I'm glad that I did. Well, said, uh, you know, I see two things in your back. Certainly the, the music, because you yeah. had to have a, an instructor, mm -hmm. right? It's really hard to learn a musical instrument on your own. Yeah. Some people can, most can't. And then you did some work in hospitality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> around thousands of people all the time. So yeah, it was... Well, you, you, know, you was, get yeah. enormous amounts of feedback. Oh yeah. And yeah. you can only blame the client so many times. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You'd, you'd know right away, you know, it became clear quickly. Yeah. Cool. Hey, I really appreciate your time today. Where can people go to connect and follow you? It's to find me on LinkedIn. So Justin Senna, just find, find me on LinkedIn. Love to, love to connect with anyone. Love, love to meet great people who, who want to do great things. And, uh, Really a pleasure to, to meet with you and, and, and join you today. And I, I'd love to come back anytime that you'll have me.